And I travel around the world um, modeling and had a great career. It would not be a Trump contest without excitement and drama. She's the immigrant who's living the American dream. But just how did Melania Trump go from fashion model to first lady? Her life has been shrouded in mystery ever since she took up residence at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But we've got the lowdown on this Slovenian model's journey from small town to magazine cover to White House. Melania Trump wasn't always a jet-setting stylish wife of a billionaire president. She started out as a small-town girl with big goals. She was born on April 26, 1970 in the quaint little railroad town of Sevnica in communist Slovenia. Her birth name is Melania Navs. Her childhood was a far cry from the White House life of luxury she is accustomed to now. Her home overlooked a river and smoking factory chimneys, but she was restless in her small town. Her childhood friend, Mirjana Jelantic, said Zevnica was too small for Melania. She always dreamed of moving away from a young age. Young Melania was described by her friend as an excellent student, very organized, disciplined, with very decent manners. These are important traits to have as First Lady of the United States. Eventually, her restlessness and big dreams of traveling took over. She moved to Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia, to go to high school. It was a chance meeting on the streets of Ljubljana that would change the trajectory of her life forever. Melania was discovered by a photographer on that fateful street and began her modeling career at 16 years old. She traveled all over Europe and became multilingual, speaking German, French, Italian, and English. Not bad for a girl from a tiny Slovenian town. The photographer who discovered Melania all those years ago still remembers how tall she was. Stain Jerko was struck by her beauty, but she did not smile very much even then. Stain believes it was because she was shy and scared, but she broke from her cage of shyness and went into the photographer's studio. That was the beginning of a whole new world of opportunities for this young dreamer with big hopes for the future. After she got a taste of the possibilities out there, she changed her name to Melania Noss and crossed the border into the United States, starting a new life in New York City in 1996. A few years later, her life would be permanently altered again when she met her current husband at a fashion week party at the Kit Kat Club. They were married in 2005 and she gave birth to their son Baron in 2006. Her friends back home were shocked about the marriage to a man who is 24 years older than she is, but they eventually came to terms with it, noting that Melania's new husband bears a resemblance to her father. Melania's father, Victor Novs, has a big personality, which may be why he reminds so many of his daughter's husband. He was a member of the Communist Party, which many joined because of lofty career career ambitions as well as a strong belief in a government-controlled state. In 2016, GQ magazine uncovered the fact that Melania has an older half-brother who she's never met from her father's previous relationship. Before he met and married Melania's mother, Victor fathered a child with a woman named Maria Sigelniak. He denied being the father to this little boy and refused to pay child support, resulting in a process of vicious litigation. Court records indicate that a paternity test was ordered proving that the boy was Victor's biological son. Although Victor did pay child support after being forced to by the courts, he has never acknowledged Melania's half-brother, Denis Sigelniak, who is now in his 50s. Dennis's mother passed away in a town called Rasnik, where he now lives in a tiny apartment. He told GQ that he wouldn't mind meeting his sisters Melania and Inez, but has been afraid to reach out to the Nav's family. At first, Melania denied this story to the GQ reporter, but after she saw the court documents proving the validity of Dennis's account, she claimed she knew all about it. She wrote that she's known about this for years and asked that her father's privacy be respected. Melania's mother, Amalia, was a resourceful woman who started out harvesting red onions on her family's farm. She eventually went on to work in the town's textile factory. It was very important to her that her daughters dress to impress, so she would sew Melania and her sister's clothes after work. It only makes sense that Melania would be obsessed with fashion in her teen and adult years. She and her older sister, Inez, turned heads for their clothes and makeup. She listened to The Cure and Metallica and loved hanging out at the local Horses Trail bar with other pop music fans in Ljubljana. After high school, Melania dropped out of architecture school. Her Facebook page says that she obtained a degree from a university in Slovenia. However, she later changed her story in a newer bio, according to NBC. Her 2016 bio stated that she paused her studies to advance her modeling career in Milan and Paris, but does not mention whether or not she got her degree. Melania's University of Ljubljana professor, Blaj Matija Vogelnik, told NBC News that she did not complete her studies and that she hadn't finished university, at least not in Ljubljana. But she's certainly not the first one ever to beef up her resume and credentials with a few alternative facts. 
Melania's first real photo shoot was in 1987. Photographer Stain Jericho recalls her bringing in a bunch of clothes for the shoot. She was shy but followed directions well. Jericho thought she had a future in front of the camera. Two weeks later, she did a barefoot, black and white catalog shoot with the same photographer. The barefoot look was not a style choice. Jericho just didn't have any shoes big enough to fit her size 9 feet. He had no choice but to take the pictures without shoes. Jericho joked about Melania's feet, saying, when you live on big feet, you live big. That certainly has proven true for Melania. In 1992, Melania won second place in a modeling contest called Slovenian Look of the Year. After that, she decided to head to Europe to invest in her modeling career. After Melania arrived in Milan and Paris, she cut ties with her old life and began anew. Her friends claimed they didn't hear from her after that, saying she cut the line behind her and started to live another life. In 1996, Melania's agent Zampoli helped her get an American modeling contract and a visa. She headed for America with high hopes, but modeling in New York was not easy. While she was only 26, that's considered old by fashion industry standards. Modeling in your late 20s can be frustrating for models, Melania's old roommate Atanian shared, adding, it's not a friendly industry to models of that age. Her roommate said Melania was frustrated over not getting enough work. She would wonder why a photographer picked someone else instead of her. Melania lost jobs to younger models and struggled to work on a daily consistent basis. She would audition all the time but failed to book the gigs she wanted. This was a hard pill for her to swallow after her modeling success in Europe. Melania's roommate said she was having a tough time making enough money to support herself. She often worried that her best years were behind her, just like that small town she left in the rearview mirror. However, Melania clapped back about her former roommate's comments, firmly telling GQ that her pictures speak for themselves. She said her portfolio shows what she did, including all the best catalogs. Melania got creative, going out for work in tobacco and alcohol ads, jobs for which her younger counterparts were not legally old enough to do. Melania's roommate claims she had plastic surgery to give her an advantage for lingerie ads, a claim which Melania denies. She scoffed at the idea, saying that a lot of people say she is doing procedures for her face, too. She says she did not have any work done. She just lives a healthy life, taking good care of her skin and body. Her goal, Melania says, is to age gracefully like her mother. Melania worked to maintain her physique in New York. She walked with ankle weights and made sure to eat seven pieces of fruit every day. She wasn't a party girl. Instead, she would go home early to get her beauty rest. In 1998, Zampoli changed Melania's life again when he invited her to the party at the Kit Kat Club in Manhattan. That night, she met a gentleman who she would eventually marry. They would have a son together and live in a big white house. But at first, Melania denied this bold billionaire's advances. He asked for her number and she refused. According to Melania, she asked for his number instead. She shared that he gave her a list of every possible way to get a hold of him. He really wanted her to call him. Melania claims she never got starstruck by this rich reality star. She waited a week before calling him. After that fateful meeting, Melania had everyone talking with a racy photo shoot, landing her the cover of British GQ magazine in January of 2000. Apparently, her soon-to-be husband requested that the magazine deliver these photos to his office. Melania considers that photo shoot to be one of her greatest achievements. Cut to 2005, Melania got married in an extravagant ceremony at the Episcopal Church of Bethesda by the Sea in Palm Beach, followed by a reception at the Mar-a-Lago Club. Melania wore a white satin Christian Dior wedding dress with a 16-foot veil. In 2006, she gave birth to their son, Baron. Melania and Barron lived quite comfortably in the Trump Tower before her husband became President of the United States of America. She was so comfortable, in fact, that she continued to live there even after her husband moved to the White House. Melania tried her hand at entrepreneurship with a jewelry line that she sold on QVC. Unfortunately, the relationship didn't last. After that, Melania created a skincare line. But that business venture ended in a lawsuit. Melania sued her business partner for $50 million when the venture failed. The suit was later settled out of court. Now, as the first foreign-born First Lady of the United States since Louisa Adams in 1825, Melania lives a private life with only a select few people allowed to be a part of her inner circle. Aside from making statements with her wardrobe such as the famous I don't care do you jacket, Melania is content to remain hush-hush about her life in the White House. That's about to change with the new unauthorized biography about her life as the first lady titled Free Melania. This book reveals that Melania has her own separate bedroom in the White House. It goes into detail about that infamous hand slap on the tarmac in Tel Aviv. This tell-all biography even revealed that the Trumps were thinking about getting a dog at one point. Melania went so far as to research different dog breeds. Ultimately, they decided against a canine companion for the White House. Many people think that Melania is a prisoner to her marriage and the presidency. That's how the hashtag Free Melania came about. 
But the author of Melania's biography, Kate Bennett, says she found the opposite to be true. That's why she added the comma in the title, Free Melania. Kate thinks Melania is probably the most free person in the Trump world. Certainly she is very different than other first ladies we've seen before. Do you think Melania is free to be herself as first lady of the US? Or do you think hashtag free Melania is legit and that she is trapped in her life with no escape? Tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Taco for more.